Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how you can make your own brand new floppy cables or at least as new as it's possible with the new old stock you can purchase online. If you ever tried to repair a vintage computer, you most likely endured the pain that floppy cables are. Either they are too short or too long or don't work or filled with connectors and adapters that you don't need. That stops today. This James 1 required a very specific cable in order to fit into the cabinet, and it was nearly impossible to find one that fitted, so I made my own. Another application would be my Rosetta system, where I need a lot of cables at a certain length. And finally, the traditional PC floppy cable with five connectors and a twist. There's no place to get new shiny ones of these, uh, even just new-ish of these. So um, that's three good excuses to learn to make your own floppy cables. But before we get started, will you please do me a huge favor, subscribe to my channel, like this video, leave a comment down below telling me how awesome I am and sharing the video with all of your friends, or at least the nerdy ones of them. And while you do all that, which by the way helps me a lot and makes me so happy, I will run the intro. Yeah! Both tools and all the components for this video was purchased on AliExpress. This is not a sponsored video or anything, but I will try to keep the links to the components in the description. Currently, they are not affiliate links, but it might change in the future. Either way, main purpose is to help you find the right components. Also, this is aimed at floppy cables, but should be easily adapted to other flat cables, such as IDE or MFM hard drive cables. I'm going to illustrate this by making a new floppy cable for my Rosetta system. My Rosetta system is a computer that I'm working on that is going to be able to address uh, at least five different floppy, uh, uh, floppy drives and the uh, built-in bus cannot do that and the operating system cannot do it either. So I'm making my own floppy switcher. And I have several videos about this that's already out and a few more in the future if everything goes as planned. Uh, I'm remaking the floppy cable for the three and a half um, inch floppy and by sheer coincidence this cable this is actually the exact, this is the cable, this is exactly the right length but it has a lot of other connectors that I'm not really using so um, I'm gonna redo this and keep the uh, length as it, as it is and I will try to get this cable out which is gonna be a tiny bit hard but Here it is, to the bench. This is the cable, and as I just said, it has the correct length. So I just need to cut a new piece of ribbon cable that is the same length plus a bit of slack. And the reason why I'm adding a bit of slack is that I need to square off the cable. The connectors are of the so-called IDC type. IDC is short for insulation displacement connector, which refers to the method the connectors are attached to the flat ribbon cable. The plug connects to the individual wires by a bunch of small spears that pierces the cable once the plug is crimped in place. So if the angle is skewed, we risk shorting or getting the wrong pins connected. This ribbon cable is a bit wider than I need, so I have to remove six wires from it before it will fit my connector. The convention is, and I say convention, that the red wire on the cable indicates pin one. And on the plug, there's also an indication, usually a triangle that indicates pin one. And logic would kind of dictate that those would fit together. And that is also the convention. But assumptions is where old computers go to die. And engineers are not always like uh, sticking to conventions. Some are just lazy, some are just thinks they are smarter than the conventions. So you have to verify that by looking at the original cable. Don't assume that. Check your cable, please. I've seen this so many times and you end up breaking stuff by doing this wrong. So check your cables. After verifying that my cable conforms to the conventions, I insert the cable in the plug make sure everything lines up 
and you can see there are some small grooves in the plug. I'm making sure that the cable fits into that. And then I give it a little bit of a pressure. Holding it with my hands, I slide it into my into the plier. Still applying a bit of pressure. And now I give it a good squeeze. And now the plug is mounted. If you were to mount this in the middle of the cable, you would typically not install the strain relief. But I'm going to install it, the strain relief because this is the end of the cable. And it works by folding the plug over on itself. Holding the cable down like this. And the strain reliever looks like this. And you slide that into here. And you don't need to use the pliers for that. You can just put that in place with your fingers. And now we have a shiny new cable with a strain relief connector in one of the ends. The other end, however, is going to be a bit tricky because as you can see on the old cable, you're going to need a twist between pin nine and 16. That will require a bit of fiddling around, but the principle is the same. And again, I'm comparing to the old cable just to make sure, have a visual confirmation. That looks just about right. That also looks just about right. And I did verify that pin one goes to pin one in this end as well. So I'll start by making sure I got enough loose cable to work with. And then I'm gonna twist this one. And now you can see the length of the cable will be skewed because I use a bit of a length in order to make the twist. And now I'm inserting this into the connector. This is, this is the most challenging part, to be honest. But I give myself a bit of extra cable to work with by allowing me to waste a bit I, however, still need to make sure that everything lines up before I can start applying pressure. That looks right. That looks right too. Holding this down. Inserting the cable. This is a bit tricky, but ah, as I said, that's a bit tricky. That was a failure. I need to take it out and verify everything again. So I'm looking right there to see that this lines up and also checking the other side it all lines up applying pressure sliding this in here applying pressure checking again looks right Looks right. Pressing gently. Now I mounted the cable in the other end. No, I mounted the connector in the other end. I'm going to strip this down just to make it look pretty. A good floss cutter will come in handy here.
So this is what this is what will happen when you use old new stock. This plastic is 40 year old and it broke. I'm going to replace the plug, but I'm leaving this in because it keeps the wires in place. So it will be easier for me to install the new plug on top of this and then cut this off afterwards. Let's try to do that. Lines up. I don't know if you can see that. That lines up. And that also lines up. Let's try this again. So this time the plastic held up. That's nice. I'm repeating. Don't know if I have enough room to add this drain relief now. I can just split a bit more of the cable. I believe, especially if you have the 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 bend here, the twist here in the end of the cable, you should definitely use the strain relief. So this is a brand new floppy cable for my Rosetta system, uh, and I only broke one plug doing it, which is good because I think I broke ten plugs just doing the preparation for this video. Those are very fragile, so. Uh, take new with a grain of salt. And that, my friends, was the story about how I ran block out on Rosetta through a floppy cable I made myself. This was an awesome journey and I'm gonna follow it up very soon because I also need to learn how to make power cables for Rosetta. So within, I'm not gonna promise you a date, but very soon there'll be a video about how to make Molex power cables for your old PCs. That's gonna be so fun. I'm also gonna make an update on Rosetta because the floppy switcher, I need to finish it. I mean, I just need to finish it now. It's It's been like three years, I guess. It's insanely stupid. I'm also gonna be back with more awesome content from my new studio. I could call it a sneak peek, but it's not. I mean, you can see it. It's awesome and I love it and I like it. And it's so good to be back. And I'm so happy to finally be standing here again and introducing this to you. So please subscribe to my channel and share this video with all of your friends so you won't miss a single episode of all my upcoming awesome content and then i guess i see you out there in the dark corners of their interwebs thank you so much for the view don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more awesome retro content if you wish to support this channel you can do so through patreon or tenor app or by purchasing some of our merchandise that helps a lot you can also support us by simply watching a lot of our videos and by getting your friends to do the same